On the eve of Britain's entry into World War I, the then Foreign Secretary, Sir Edward Grey, famously turned to a friend and said, The lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. Well, like many of you, I woke this morning to news of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and thought about the lights going out in Europe again, about the young soldiers who will not now see middle age or fatherhood, I thought about the flat borderland of the Donbass, where I took a camera crew nearly a decade ago when Russia first made clear it wouldn't risk such a close neighbour becoming a democracy. But honestly, what I really thought about, so perhaps you did too, was how this distant war will affect me and mine. I thought about my childhood. I'm 53, just part of that generation, who grew up in the shadow of the atomic cloud, having nightmares about the four-minute warning and the lunatic scramble to find safety from nuclear fallout. Of course, it never happened. Thatcher and Reagan spent the Soviet Union into oblivion. Pope John Paul II rallied the Poles. And for 40 years, we have laboured under the delusion that the peace dividend was permanent. We've spent the decades since the Berlin Wall fell obsessing over what, in civilizational terms, is trivia. From Black Lives Matter to Stonewall, we are riven by differences that are actively promoted by people who stand to make a living out of grievance. Their ideologies have taken root in a culture which has cultivated a kind of incuriosity and indeed wishful thinking about how the world really works, about what hardship really looks like about what it actually takes to stop our weakness being exploited by those who see it as an opportunity. So are we on the cusp of returning to those days of my childhood when what you read about in the news in faraway places had a very real bearing on your life here in Britain? Well, let me put it another way. Is the Cold War ready to resume? Must we start building roads and schools and hospitals in new British Army garrison towns in Poland, Slovakia and Estonia, just as we once did in West Germany. Will your children rally to the flag? Are the lamps about to go out all over Europe? So much depends on what happens in the mind of one man. That's not an encouraging thought. Until this morning, I thought an ex-KGB colonel like Putin could always be depended upon to behave rationally. Now, I, like you, maybe we're not so sure. Two things come to mind about him. The first point I'd make is this. He's a bitter man. He feels the humbling of his motherland at a deeply personal level. We recently learned that in that mad early 1990s scramble for wealth and status after the Soviet Union's collapse, Putin was forced to drive a taxi to make ends meet. For that fall from grace, he apparently blames us. He blames the West. But there's another point, and it's often overlooked. Putin may have grown up in an atheist state, but he still wears his baptismal cross. He was given to him after he was christened in secret by his devoutly Christian mother. His communist forerunners had a mission to spread the gospel of Marxism, Leninism globally. The creed they took to client states in the developing world was fundamentally about how they should run their economies. Now, Russia's message is about values. Look, says Moscow, where has democracy got the West? Countries like Britain are morally corrupt and collapsing from within, he says. Only good enough for parking an oligarch's cash. Putin sees himself as a czar. The word means emperor and Putin is behaving like one. Not for communism, but his version, and here's the thing, of Christendom. His recent behaviour has been unexpected, partly because it seems to contain an element of spiritualism. Mysticism was the word Boris Johnson used this week. We must hope that his moral crusade is simply to recover Ukraine, which he sees as the spiritual birthplace of the Russian people. But he won't stop because his convictions fail him. He will stop because we stop him. This morning I woke and wondered, as Edward Grey did in 1914, about where this all ends, whether the young people we know, who we love, will be called upon to fight a state that doesn't think our way of life has the martial robustness to endure. Putin will probably win the battle for Ukraine, possibly within days, but the Second Cold War, if that's what this is, 
will take years to resolve. That's my brazier angle.